Hello, and welcome to another episode of Scavenger Life. This is episode number 521 at scavengerlife.com. So, what's up? <laughs> I want to briefly talk about mental health. Mm-hmm. Again, so, last time, as usual. Yeah, <laughs> last time we talked, uh, I had brought up my mental health. Yes. And very nice, got a lot of nice comments, people giving suggestions. I just want to be clear. I do that mainly because I think it's important to normalize yes. talking about mental health. Yeah. Like, I know what I need to do. I know how to get help, uh, although I do appreciate everyone's uh, sympathy. But, you know, uh, I think that that is just something that all humans deal with. Yeah. And, uh, you know, in those of us that run our own businesses, it's especially important to deal with that. And in this country, the United States of America, I think sometimes we're not very good about dealing with mental health. No, it's either like you're mentally ill, right. like psychotic, right. like you have to get locked up in a uh, institution, or you know, it, you've got to be one hundred percent good. We know somebody. He is in the military, and he served for twenty years, and he's like such a cool guy. He's like the most manly man. You know, you know? <laughs> yeah. And, you know, he served in Afghanistan and uh, Iraq. And I remember... I found this on the web. Hey, be quiet. <laughs> uh, and I remember he uh, he was having problems. Like, yeah. he was having panic attacks. He would, like, carry around a gun because... And his thing was, is, like, he didn't like being around groups of people. Mm-hmm. You know, that really freaked him out. And, you know, being in the military, he felt like he couldn't say anything you yeah know, we, we, we we've all heard this you yeah know? right and yes he was smart though i don't know if it was him or his wife but they actually went to a couple's counselor because i guess that was more acceptable right. to have problems in, <laughs> in your marriage in your marriage wow. and then when they went inside of the private room yeah. with the therapist he was like yeah it's not a couple's thing yeah it's me right i need help will you help me and not let other people know it's for me. Right. And I guess that the therapist was cool with that. Yeah. And so his wife left and then he started <laughs> so I see getting it. help, you know. Yeah. I mean, good for him. And it's like, that's such not a good thing, you know. Like, right. To have to hide it. Yeah. Like, exactly. it should be okay to be able to talk about things. Uh, well, there's a stigma. I mean, like you said, even if you are, you know, telling someone, oh, I, I mean, I think a lot of people our age and younger are more open about talking about it if you you know like there are people who we know who are our age who are really open about it oh i deal with anxiety you know like they 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 openly tell you about that um and you're like oh okay yeah me too (laughs) but but older i feel like there are older people or people just a little bit older than us where like you said like the person you're talking about is just a little bit older than us Mm -hmm. um not by much and it's also in the military but yeah there's a stigma of just being like I'm cool, but I need help. You know, like, I'm not going to, like, do anything bad here, but... And and I think, too, it's it's also, you know, especially someone like me, very solution-oriented, you know, I want it to be like, what's the problem? And oftentimes, it's not just one thing. It's kind of a cascade of things. It's like a whole thing in my mind. Right. You know, it's not just like, oh... We're opening a cafe. That's the only thing that's the, the problem. No, right. it's like other things. It's your past. It's your future. It's all those things. Anyway, yes. I just wanted to bring that up. If anyone's struggling, get some help. There's lots of ways to get help. There's medication. There's people. There's people who love you. Whatever. Um, and if you're one of those people that's like super cool, you have like a super cool family, and you're <laughs> like super great at work and everything. I mean, it's like I don't believe you, but... <laughs> I am grateful there are people who are like that. I have never felt like that. and I have uh, never met any of those people. No, I think I have met a few of those people. It's and, and, and it's not to say people don't have stresses, but then it's like, can they deal with them without like having a complete like breakdown? Sure. Yeah. Um, right. And, yeah. Who are those people? I don't right. know. Yeah. And, you know, and I think it's important to talk about, especially for those of us that run a business, is because with... If I'm in a bad state of mind, I just start sabotaging my life, you know, yeah. whether it be my personal life or my 
or my work or business. You which know. is all the same, yeah. by the way. <laughs> which is, um, which it's is all right here. All the same. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's talk about eBay. Uh, eBay! I want to talk about like the different relationships we have with eBay. And when I mean eBay, it just means like selling online or, yeah, or wherever you're selling. Business. Sure. For us, eBay is it. That's where we sell. I sell a I little bit on Craigslist. I love eBay. I know people eBay. love to hate on eBay, <laughs> and we complain about eBay, but I really do love the, the platform of eBay. Like it I really do too. fits my personality. Yeah, yeah. Funky, weird. Used, parts old. are slow. Parts are, <laughs> parts are old. Slow. You can buy parts anything. Parts are new, but people still keep showing up, and I, I feel like there's a lot of emotional things on eBay. Like people buy. Nostalgia, yep. you know. Absolutely, uh, I know people kill it on Amazon, but it's, it's just a different platform. Just a different. It's anyway. so different. So our different relationships. We're in a much different relationship with our eBay store than we were when we started. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, it started off just kind of like eBay's, just earning some extra income. Right. Pay pay for a Vitamix. Yeah. That's right. That 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 was the first thing we I'm ever bought. I'm staring at that Vitamix right That's now. It's the I first thing it. we ever bought. Uh, <laughs> uh, then eBay became like, this is our income. You know, like this is paying all our bills. We are making all of our income 100 percent right. from eBay. It is like my full time job. Yep. You know, I'm driving around <laughs> Goodwills, <literally>. getting <laughs> oh trash bags God. full of old <laughs> shoes. That was 2010. I remember because <laughs> you worked for the census. We were like doing freelance and your for the census. Dad and sister <laughs> and her boyfriend were here, and I remember I would like unload my car, and they were just probably thinking like, They're what? like what is going on? <laughs> <laughs> no, they knew. They knew we were selling on eBay. I know, but... I don't think they knew the scope. I think those were the days when, yeah, people were like, yeah, I guess it's working for you, but whatever. Um, then eBay became like, well, eBay's like funding our other projects we want to do. Right. And that was real estate. Yeah. Such a big word, but we were just well, buying... Well, it was real estate. We were, we were buying, you know, houses. Mm-hmm. S- Two houses and fix them up, and eBay would like pay all pay all of our bills and was helping to fix these houses up so we could turn Rent them, them into rentals. You know, yeah. Now I feel like we're in that eBay's ex- is making us extra cash while we start a new business. Yeah, you know, it's not funding this new business, right? It's Right now, actually, I don't think I've told you this. I'm taking our eBay money goes because now with the main managed payments, it goes into we, One we account. Really made a special savings account. For yeah, it. and I'm paying off our uh, it, uh, our uh, it's mortgage at the end of every month. Well, I knew that. Okay. Yeah. Good. Uh, yeah, because we had opened that savings account, and right. uh, you were like, "I'm just gonna move eBay to that account," and sort of like. Separate businesses. Airbnb goes over here. eBay goes over here. eBay right. pays for this. So we yeah pay our regular payment every month, mm-hmm. and then eBay's like the extra cash on top of that goes straight to principal. Yeah, so we're paying over what we pay. Right. We're paying more than right. is o- owed every month on the mortgage. Because I would like to try and get this paid off like in ten years. Yeah, like, instead of what is our mortgage? Uh, tw- it's, it, w- it was twenty. It's probably like 18. Right, okay, yeah. yeah. So it was a 20 year mortgage. Yeah. Um, yeah, so the reason for that, as anyone who's like a financial nerd knows, you cut down how much interest you pay by hundreds right. of thousands of dollars right. sometimes. <laughs> um, so we're like, oh, we should dr- probably try to yeah. do that. Although some people say it's better to take that money and invest, invest it in, in the stock a- market. Anyway, it's a different thing. Yeah, but I, I, okay. I That's think okay. for us, it's really, it's like, it's more of an emotional thing. I would love just to not have any payment every Ever. month. Yeah, I know. That would be nuts. So anyway, yeah. So that's, you know, that's just kind of where we're at, you know. Yeah. Um, and uh, I also think it's interesting about, you know, we've, we've had to do this throughout our selling on eBay for the past, what, 12, 13 years or something. Yeah. Like, having to find how to get excited about selling online again. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Uh, Look, right now is tough because we don't have a helper and we have a, a, a crushing <laughs> load of work f- for our other businesses. So I'm like, I look at my scheduled 
And I'm just like, oh, God. <laughs> but the good thing is, like, this morning we yes. ate. And then we went to our office. Yeah. And we cleaned it. Because so it was a mess. It was just, like, death piles. Just it was death, death piles. piles. Death piles. Let's be honest. Death pile. Like, every corner, you're like... Software, buttons, clothes, just, old plates, uh, I, magazines. I don't even think we looked at the couch yet. The couch is, a like, four death piles on the couch itself. <laughs> Maybe after this yeah. recording, we go to the... Oh, my God. So, yeah. what, we, what we did was, is I brought up bins, and we just started putting things in boxes and bins. Yeah. Close them up and Put take them, them away to our back storage for later. And for me, because you know we're now talking about like getting back into it, and for me to, to get excited, I need like a clean space. Yes, it's interesting. Other people, some people can work or like their stuff all over the place. <laughs> I don't know. Like it makes them feel like they know where everything is. It makes them feel good. I'm not like that kind of person. It's got to be like, a clean sleep, clean space. Yes. I bring organized. a box of 10 things, yes. and I'm like, I'm going to do these 10 things, and then they're going to go yes. where they need it to should, go. And look, when and we, that's what I like. When we have a helper, it's like that. Right. These are the things you're doing. It's not 10. It's more than that. These are the things you're doing this week. When you're done, tell me. Right. I put them away. Yeah. But since our helper, and we're still sourcing and whatever, it's like, oh, God, it just gets yeah. so crazy. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, so it's good. So I think that's how I'm getting excited about it again is like cleaning yeah. our space. Yeah, organizing. Fresh. Look, if you want to be the helper. Yep. I mean, I think it's going to have to be for at least a short while. Yeah, until we find someone. And then, you know, go out into our, basically our building, yeah. which is a thrift store. Essentially. Go and pick out 10 things that excite me. Think yeah. Fun things. Yeah. Come back, take those pictures. Yep. Put them in drafts. Yep. Give them to you, the boss. Yep. To, to list. You don't even have to do titles if you don't want. I that. wanted you. I wanted you titles. Well, do yeah. Just don't let it bog you down because if you're like, oh, I don't know what this is, right. does doesn't matter. Yeah. But titles help me because when I see that, I'm like, boom, listed, yep. done. Yep. Like, yep. Research. Done. So anyway, that's kind of where we're at with with that with eBay. Well, that's good. eBay, eBay, as your nephew says, eBay. eBay. Um, <laughs> can we look up something on eBay? <laughs> <laughs> no, we can't. Will Will? Did you buy this for me? <laughs> Would you buy this for? Me? Will, will you so buy this nice? for me? It's just go, like, will you buy this for me? No, you have everything you ever wanted in yeah. life. Okay, let's talk about our numbers. Oh, my God. On eBay. Um, so we sold 25 items. Yeah. <laughs> our gross sales were $983.04. Our net sales after... $50. The shipping was... taxes, $722. Okay, that's, that's not as bad as I thought. I mean... It's still pretty freaking low. At the end of the day, it's about $100 a day. It's been, I'll take it. It's been slow, man. I'll take it. Uh, I mean, I look, people are like, well, you're not listing anything. And I'm like, true. yeah, but I have 7,500 items in my store. Me and someone online were talking about how, and it's true. Like, it does help to list because yeah. we've seen this. Yes. I we, saw this conversation. We put up 100 items. Yeah. 20 of those things sell immediately. Re- right away. First week. And then maybe like... It's 50 of them sell within a year, and then right. there's like 20 things that sell within like five years. <laughs> 11 years. Yeah. You know, exactly. that's just, you know, there's like really popular thing, mm-hmm. then there's like long tail, and then there's like the very tip of the tail. Like, what do you call the <laughs> longest part of the tail? When you don't like, list for a long time. Yeah. Like we Those have, new things don't go up. All the like popular things sell. Then you're just eating into like long tail, and then your store kind of just becomes long, long, long tail. Extra long I tail. I mean, to be fair, again, stuff's still selling. We're still making 100 yeah, bucks a day. I know. Hey, I'll tell I know. you. I know. Hey. You know. <laughs> hey. Uh, yeah. You know, that's still a nice sized chunk that I throw at our uh, at mortgage every, yeah. every uh, month, you know. Yeah. So it's good. And that, uh, you know, we've been working very hard diligently on this other business on the coffee shop yes. that uh you know we love slash hate slash love you won't hate it <laughs> slash 
it takes a lot of time. Yeah. <laughs> That's it's it. Good. It, it's good. It's a baby. It's an infant that needs right. attention like a you know, child. <laughs> uh, things we sold. Lots of wackadoodle things. I love it. It's like the most long tail of the long tail. Yeah. I forget. Jewelry. I, it's a blur. Pottery. Clothes. Clip-on, like, vintage clip-on earrings. Yep. Sold today. Markers. I still... Look, uh, somebody look up when we talked about the markers, buying the mar- How many years ago was five that? Five years ago. It's just like... I don't think it was five years. I think it was. Uh, I still have two huge bins of markers, yep. and they sell all yep. the time. Yep. It's kookamonga. Yep. Yeah, it's crazy. Scavenge of the week? None. We did not scavenge this week. No, we didn't. Yep. I did. We didn't do no. it. Customer issues. We've been having, you know, returns. But they're, the, the last two returns were um, didn't fit. Right. One was shoes. One was a cutting board. Yeah. They said didn't fit because they thought it was too small, um, which right. is fine by me. I do want to make a complaint as a customer okay. of the post office. Okay. I don't know what is going on still. I I know it's the pandemic. I know it's the shortage of workers. I know it's like leadership. I I mean, tell me the problem. The problem is they won't pick my stuff up. Mm. Even there there have been some times where even if I do an official request through the website, it takes me doing like two or three requests to be like, there's stuff on my porch. Please pick it up. Now is our regular carrier. She, she is, but I think cause it's summertime, she has like more time off or uh, she's on vacation yeah. or something. Cause the last few days, nothing. I mean, this is a good example of when, stuff when, sitting on the porch when people still. have problems with the post office is normally well, what they have problems with is their local yeah, the carrier. person. Yeah. And if you have different carriers every day or it's just they don't know the, subs, yeah. they don't know the system. Right. And like we have a system with right. our carrier. She knows exactly where things are. She, she, we, we don't have to ask her to pick it up. Right. She I just put it. the flag yeah. up and she, th- she knows that means there's right. packages. Now for the subs, what, I, cause I'm like, there are subs right now. It's mm. summer. I don't know, whatever. So I'll put the flag up. I'll put a note in there because I don't always remember to do the thing overnight. Like I just, whatever. Right. So I, I write their packages on the porch this date, Wednesday, you know, seven, whatever. Like they're there. Ignored. Ignored. I'll even just put a letter that's like a bill in there for them to pick up. They ignore it. They just like throw mail over it. I'm like, <laughs> it's a letter. It's right there. I, I mean, this it's, is not an excuse, nuts. but I can imagine being a sub and oh, you're, I, you're, you're like, I don't know if I can finish my regular route by like eight o'clock. No, I don't care. That's I'm exactly just, no. why. And I know that's why. And that's why I'm sympathetic yeah. because I read the subreddit of USPS of all the carriers who are online being like, are you kidding me? We are so overloaded right now. Like I can't take one second to yeah. like do anything. At our coffee shop, so. when I have been opening, there's a guy who lives in our town. He moved here a couple of years ago from up north. Um, and he gets an iced coffee. Up north. Yeah. Uh, and he sits on a bench right outside of yeah, the coffee Yeah, there's a nice shop, bench. And he just smokes a cigarette, drinks his iced coffee, and we're like along the street. And he just like people, he, he watches people. And yeah. Cars, and I'll just go out there and talk to him. He was he was a carrier for yeah. like 20 years. Yep. Well, actually, he was 30 years. So oh, I guess. Geez. I guess that you have to put in 30 to get the full pension. 30? But he was a carrier. Yeah. Did the, had a route. Yeah. And he said, it was great. They didn't bother me. I just did my route. Yeah. But he said, when Amazon started coming yes. on, it really changed things and made life a lot more difficult. Yes. Because not only then did we have to do all the, the mail... You yep. had to do all these packages, all the packages too. And he just said it was Tons like a whole different, like doing mails much different then, than it's your like a package delivery. Well, you're like UPS yeah. now. I mean, they always had packages, but not at the volume. I mean, right. the volume is just nuts. So I understand, but I'm also like, y'all, I'm trying to run a business here. It's a joke. So yeah. I wonder if we know she's out of town, I wonder if we just take packages. I in. don't know if she's okay. out of town because I've right. seen her a couple of times last week. Gotcha. So I put in an official, like, I need stuff picked up for mm. Monday, um, and I'll just see. I mean, yeah. 
But since we go to town a lot, it, I could just drop, and we don't off. have like large amounts we sell yeah. right now. We yeah. could just take it in. That's uh, true. Until it feels like she's back. That's right. And we're going to be away for two weeks. So yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So anyway, that's my complaint. The, the other thing is, I got a UPS package. This is the first time it's ever happened. Oh yeah. It was like oh delivered at two forty five p.m. So I'm home at like four, mm-hmm. and I'm looking around. And I'm like, it's nowhere. And the weird thing is I asked our Airbnb cleaner because she dropped linens off right after that, like 15 minutes later. And I was like, was there a box? Because she she actually, two days before that, was like, oh, I brought your boxes in because they just put them in the front yard. I was like, thanks. Yeah. No box. Yeah. Can't find it. UPS won't tell so me anything. So we think maybe they got stolen, but we don't really live in a neighborhood where people That's do that. That's never happened so. before. Yeah, it's, it's like odd. A rural, and then I'm like, did the yeah. post office accidentally take that box? Yeah. I, don't know I guess we'll going, find like, out. What's going on? Yeah. So anyway, yeah. So it's a little bit nuts, but you know, you just gotta roll with it. Roll with just it. Just roll with it. Okay, let's go to the calls that people sent in. Okay, you can call our voicemail line. The phone number is 540-407-8486. Or you can email us an vo- uh, audio file that's kind of like a voicemail. Our email is thescavengerlife at gmail.com. Hi, Jay and Ryan. It's Samantha in Florida. I've been reselling for years, and I had a situation recently that I thought I would tell you about. Um, so I thought you buy something through the Global Shipping Program. I thought they were a little nuts because I didn't think it was worth shipping to Germany <laughs> or wherever it went. <laughs> so then they got it. It was something I was selling for a friend, and she thought it was unused. It turns out it had writing in it. It was an address book, leather bound. I know, to send to Germany, right? So the lady let me know it's not brand new, and I said, okay, so I can press return or send a refund, but then I don't know what happens to all the global shipping fees. And it turns out when – I looked it up. It said something about if you cancel, all fees are returned. So I pressed cancel as opposed to send refund because I can only refund the amount I receive, not all the other fees that go with global shipping. And so then she wrote me back and said she was notified that she would get all of the fees back. Um, so I don't know if anyone else is aware of this, but I know I was. my first question was like, well, how do we get all the fees back to her when I'm only allowed to refund the exact amount I got in cash or in my payments? So, yeah, cancel global shipping. Global shipping will refund everything automatically, I guess. There you go. <laughs> all right, you guys. Take care. Hi, Samantha. Um, yeah, so what she's saying is uh, global shipping. So someone, she got an address book that she thought was unused selling for a friend, and the person was like, oh, there's writing in this. Um, so she said instead of s- choosing send a refund to a global shipping um, item, she said you cancel it. Mm. So that the person on the other end gets all their, like, VAT tax and shipping back, I guess. I mean, doesn't that seem weird? Because doesn't eBay have to pay for some of the shipping from the U.S. to yeah. to Europe, and they're yeah. just going to give it back to them? Yeah, I That's, don't know. Yeah, I mean, how, how do how do uh, if we handle that? I've never had to do that. Okay. No. Um, either yeah. people say I want to return this, or they want a partial refund. Yeah. So we've never really had to do that because we just either have people return things if they didn't want it or we give them a partial refund i've never yeah i don't I mean, think i've ever done like a total i can't remember don't we tell people to actually open up a case and once you open up a case and glue oh because that's usually for damage call. yeah yeah they're if they're now i've had that happen more frequently than what um because i mean in yeah. because in her case it's kind of like damage i mean she bought it the person right. bought it as like new and then it comes with writing, which is damaged. And, right. You know, I don't know. It's anyway. It's a weird conundrum. I'm glad it worked out. I will say, it is interesting. We noticed that a significant portion of our sales have been global shipping recently. Well, it was funny because the week before, I would say 85% were global shipping. Yep. Every single one. And yep. if it wasn't global shipping, it was going to like one of those ship forwarders in right. like a major city going to... Hong Kong or and something. Were they in only Canada or was it no, all No, it was the Canada place? and Australia mostly. Wow, I was just, it, it was just like Australia, Australia, Canada, Canada, Canada. Forward shipper to, you know, yeah. Malaysia. <laughs> okay, I don't know. Hey, Jay and Ryan. It's 
um, Mickey calling from Nicomas, Florida. Thank you so much for your show. I love listening to it on the drive time and can't wait for every weekly episode. Um, I'm a part-time reseller. My shop is called The Good Silver. I've been selling consistently for about a year and a half. Uh, you actually bought a painting from my store, and when I was watching the Lavender Clothesline video uh, podcast, which I always do, it was so fun to see it hung in your coffee shop. And I, so can, I can also recommend your coffee. I gave a subscription to my daughter for Christmas in California, and she loved it, and it was great. I do have some questions regarding how you run your eBay store. I'm kind of looking for a scavenger life cheat sheet. Um, often when I'm listing, I find myself saying, what would Ryan do? What would Jay do? First, do you give best offer option on everything you sell? And um, what is your philosophy on best offer? Next, how often do you run sales? Or if you do run sales, and how do you decide at what discount level? I know a lot of scavengers you know, that are, are a lot of resellers I watch online um, have sales every week. And I just, I don't know, I wanted to know what you thought about that. Um, and then about promoted listings. Do you do promoted listings and at what level? And the last thing regarding the eBay store is do you do flat rate shipping for all buyers or calculated? And what is your philosophy on that? Thank you guys for everything you do. You never cease to inspire and happy Independence Day. Okay. Uh, yes, this, it's, it's good to hear from you. We actually have never actually talked. You had uh, messaged us about a piece of art. It was an oil painting. Yeah. And, and it's kind of cryptic. And you were like, I would ask you where it came from. And you kind of told me. It's cool, though. It's a real oil painting yes. of an older lady. Smoking a cigarette, drinking a cup of with coffee. a cup of coffee, it's the best. and it was cool. And so we actually bought it from you; it was a good deal. And yeah, it's, it's in it's our in coffee, coffee shop, shop, and people take pictures around it, and people they talk it. about it. It's, it's like, such it's, a great, it's great. Very, and I'm glad you got a subscription, yeah, uh, of coffee, uh, which is a great gift. So let's think if we can't answer some of these questions. Um, okay, let, I have it in front. Okay. I have the transcript in front of me. Okay. So. Uh, Okay, best offer. Do I put best offer on everything? No, I don't. Um, there are some things where I'm just like... I mean, a good rule of thumb is above $30. Yeah, anything really, above that... Above $30 is a lot of meat on the bone, as they say. To give offers. If you're buying things for a dollar, yeah. and if you're trying to sell them for $30 or more... You can, we can handle best offer because if someone wants twenty five dollars, I honestly like now I do it above fifty because, okay. and I'll I'll talk yeah. about why. Um, so another reason why I'm not putting best offer on just everything is lower priced items, but also the ability to send offers mm. is there. So I wake up every single morning and I have a bookmark page of like send offers. Um, it's just like the bookmark seller hub page and I send an offer uh, every morning for 5% which is the lowest you can send and uh, I say allow counter offers and I have a little personalized message that's just like thanks for supporting small sellers uh, we love we love make making offer we allow counter offers something like I forget what I say I haven't I copy and paste it um, and so I get sales from that. I get a lot of sales from that, actually, I think. So people will accept the offer or they'll counter offer with something and we'll figure it out. Um, so in terms of running sales, uh, I have my store on sale all the time. We didn't used to do that. Um, but I don't know. Like, I think that's also why I'm... Um, we wanted to get rid of clothes. That was where it started. And we were just like, we want to clear out our clothes. So I put clothes on 30% off. Just every single piece of clothing is 30% off all the time. Um, that's another reason why I upped the, the uh, number where I started best offer. Because I already have a 30% discount on things. And I do make offer. And I'll accept offers if people message me. If they're like, hey, will you take uh, whatever? Because you can do reply with offer now. Right. Which you couldn't for a long time. So there's all these chances for people to make offers. You know, It's not just the make offer button. So yeah. So I basically have a perma sale. We never used to do that. But I just 
felt like it was a ne- good negotiating tactic where I'm like, it's already 25% off, you know, or whatever. It's already, right. my store is already 25% off. And then you can kind of negotiate from there, um, depending on the item. Um, promoted listings, I do 1%. Yep. That's it. I do 1%. I don't right. do higher than that. I do, there was a time where I took promoted listings off and our sales really dropped, um, mm-hmm. which is annoying. And and we get it. I know we're going to get a wave of comments about how they get angry at eBay because it's more fees. It's just like, totally. just, we're already paying I agree. subscriptions. We're paying, you know, final value fees. And now we have to do promoted uh, yeah. listings. It's just, but I felt better doing a 1% promoted listings on everything Um, when our store subscription went down, we used to pay $300 a month for our level to list up to 10,000, but now it's like $60 a month. So I was like, okay, that's a huge savings for us every month. So I'm just going to put everything on 1%. Why not? I don't know. It's not very much. Um, I don't think I've ever talked about all that stuff before, but I don't, you know, yeah. I don't think it's I mean, a huge secret that people try to like. It's also changed. I mean, s- yeah. some of these things we're talking about have only been the past year or yeah. so. So, you know, it changes and then. And sometimes we get, I, yeah. We will get tired of a sale and, just and then turn we it just off. turn it all off. Yeah. Um, yeah. And in terms of shipping, I think I've talked about this before, but maybe I haven't talked about it recently. I don't do flat rate and I don't do free shipping. I do calculated. Um end of story like postage is way too expensive for me to try to guess you know whether so we're in virginia so if i'm shipping to california it's way different than shipping to virginia uh or somewhere on the east coast so i just do you know especially now with like dimensional weight like i try i try to you know sort of guesstimate the size of something um and then uh obviously i just weigh it um and man, shipping is expensive. With dimensional weight, if it's over 12 inches for the post office, I will say I've been using FedEx and UPS a lot lately for larger items, uh, FedEx ground and UPS ground, uh, because there's a there's a drop-off point right like two buildings away from our roaster building. So I just drop by in the morning. I'm like, UPS ground, FedEx. Yeah. Um, so that's been helpful. Hey guys, this is Mike, and I was just calling to tell you that I like your program. I listen to it all the time. I like hearing about the coffee shop. I also would like to hear a little bit more about the rentals. I know you have the other podcast. I think it all kind of goes to eBay because that's where a lot of your money has come from, from listening to you from the very beginning of your podcast. So if you could, every once in a while, throw in how all those things are doing. Thank you very much. Bye. Yeah, see, it's funny because I really love this request because... There have been times where we will kind of veer off and talk about our rentals and our, oh, we talk about our coffee shop all the time. But I would love to be able to talk more about those things because it is a lot of what we do are like other, like real estate, you know? Um, and we do have shampoo and booze. My sister and I took a break during the pandemic just because, you know, she was a frontline worker working in a grocery store and like it was just madness. So we were like, we're taking a break. And plus a lot of people, Air- Airbnbs in the beginning were shut down. So it was a little bit chaotic. I will say though, our, so yeah, we think about, I feel like having an, a, a rental now of a vacation, uh, a r- 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 rental is a really hot thing. Like yeah. every, everyone it wants to have them and they're turning the back of their houses into them or buying houses. I mean, yeah. we, we've men- mentioned it before, like we, I've had a couple of young people contact me like, I want to have a rental. I'm like, well, okay. I mean, yeah. it's all, I just got to say, it's a lot of investment. It took up a lot of our time. I mean, it took a up a lot of, lot of our, our last 10 years. All our money. Yeah. <laughs> a lot like, of it. All of it. But now that we've done it, yeah, I don't say it's passive. It's not passive. But it's pretty passive. What's Now that we have a cleaner, it's like semi-passive. Like what's, what's the word, yeah, between like active and passive, like we, we gotta. I, I, yeah. There's like gotta be a better word for so, it. So I mean, it's nice. I do a lot of the coordinating with All renters the coordinating. online. Yeah. yeah. So I handle communications and people booking and, and asking, asking questions. questions and people have a b- million yeah, questions. You know, where's the firewood and yeah. what's the best place to go on the uh, river and what stuff. hike should we take at this right. time with these dogs and these kids. So, you know, like when you wake up in the, uh, it's morning and go through and send offers to eBay people, yeah, I wake doing up Airbnb. and I like contact 
people. Okay, you, you, you're coming up in two days. Here's the door code. And yeah. Like, anyway, so that's all happening. We have our cleaner who cleans, cool. which is great. Yeah, Although we support her. her if she has problems, if she can't handle one rental. Right. We sometimes clean. But other than that, it's great. So we're doing very well with that. We're making good money off of those. But again, it was a good solid 10 years to get there. Yeah. Buying and renovating these houses. Yep. And, uh, and you maintain them. You yeah. have to maintain them. If something happens to the AC unit, like right now, one of our sinks is leaking just a little bit, and we're like, <laughs> but you know. I will say it's a good question. What it has done is, and if anyone has been hearing this podcast for a long time, yes, like I said, our relationship with eBay was eBay was our income. Yep. And like a lot of people who know who do eBay for their income. Right. If you stop doing eBay, you don't have an income. Yeah. You know, we n- no longer have that problem. Right. So that's why when things are slow right now, because we haven't really been paying much attention to our eBay store. Yeah. It's okay. Right. Because we've built up this other business. Right. You know? Yeah. Uh, it's really nice, you know? And that's why I've tried to talk about in the past. And I always wonder other people that sell on what eBay. What are you doing with I'm like, your money? You yeah. know, people will come on and they're making... So much money. Yeah, what are you Especially doing? Especially when we would hear from a lot of Amazon people. I haven't really heard from those people recently or yeah. in the past couple of years. Like, you know, people would be making, I'm making $30,000 a month. And I'm always like, what are you doing with that money? Yeah, because like, I only asked because when we started doing well on eBay, our answer was... We well, bought real estate. We're buying real estate and we're fixing these houses up. And yeah. they're really expensive. Right. You know, it costs $75,000 to like renovate this house. Minimal. Like, that's, <laughs> That's like a lot. Here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but once we've done that, we now have these income generating properties. Right. You know? Right. And so I don't know what my point is other than just like that's kind of what the uh, trajectory of our eBay experience right. has been. So we're just not grinding because we right. saw early on, this is cool. I love doing it. I love getting big Santa Claus bags of old shoes. But I don't want to do this when I'm like 50 yeah. years old. No. Oh my God, I'm almost 50. Wait, has it, wait a second. How old are you? You just almost, had a birthday. Almost 60, you know. And so, <laughs> when I'm 60. So oh, we saw that and yeah. that's why we invested money when we did. And that's right. why we're kind of going through this struggle with opening up this coffee shop right. in our town with a roastery. Right. Uh, I really believe in the two partners we have, and yep. I think we can build something cool that will be fun, right? That's good for our community, that will also make us money, right, for the long term. I hope that answered your question. <laughs> let's have some coffee talk as we are talking about. Sure. Okay. So job. let's. Yeah. So you, you want to talk about uh, something else? We had July Fourth oh uh, weekend happen. Oh my happened. god! It was crazily. Uh, last weekend well we live in a place where people come here for vacation and it was great and our partners got just to see how busy it can get in our town yeah and that we have a place that people want to go to so it was great we had probably our best weekend ever yeah uh and it was you know crazy out the door like Actually, even today, it's a Sunday, I'm checking out our numbers on our phone because we have an app and it yeah. shows you how well you do. We're having a great day today. Well, yeah. um, it's funny because the it's like I always tell people, this is the peak of the peak of the tourist season. We have a pretty long tourist season here. I mean, although, people come here all the time, but summertime? Yeah, although some people say in the fall, I guess we'll find out, you know, in the fall people come because it's springtime. I mean, sorry, it's fall. <laughs> what is You it? know, with the uh, leaves are turning color. And it's so. still night. Like, it stays mm-hmm. warm here until, like, yeah. November. So, right. yeah. So. so, anyway, if you are interested in supporting us, go to Broad Porch Coffee. Dot com. Buy some coffee. You buy coffee that we, you, Ryan Hudson, roasts. Yeah. I, J. Deb, and I bag the coffee. Yep. And, uh, yeah, and you can taste the fruits of our labor. We're you know? roasting tomorrow morning. Yep. And, again, our partners are always amazed when we start getting <laughs> sales from... Scavengers. Arkansas and, and Alaska. California. And Maine and and like, New Mexico. They're like, yeah, we don't know who those people are. I'm like, I do. <laughs> They're scavengers. Like, you can leave a note. You can say, "Yeah, 
Trash Elves Forever. And if you go to Instagram, uh, we're on Instagram, Broad Porch Luray, right? Is it Broad Porch Luray? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, and uh, we post pictures up there every so often. So yeah, you can see us roasting. Kind of a... There's a picture of Jay bagging. Yep. So cool. All right, this podcast is ending. Three, Three two, two, one. one. Bye. <laughs>